Hello and welcome to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. Lynn Thompson here along with head football coach Terry Sims. As we are now rested after a week off and the Cats are now finding themselves tied at the top of the MEAC Conference race with North Carolina a and Three games left in the season and the Cats now have their own destiny in their hands. And Coach Sims, uh, as we talk about uh, the final three games of the season, uh, four and one in conference play is is about where you you want it to be. We are still are licking our wounds after the homecoming loss. We'll talk a little bit about that, uh, but but more importantly, uh, Coach, you, you know the Cats. All they have to do now is take it one game at a time. Uh, we're back to where we need it to be, aren't we? We are, and you know we're we're still going to keep the, the the same mindset we had all year long. It's one and zero every week. Uh, we fell short a couple weeks ago during homecoming, but. We, we worked, we scrimmaged three days last week. We, we got some, I think, good work in, good individual work, got some rest, and now we're, we're focused on Delaware. Let's, let's talk about the mental aspects of it. Uh, coming off of a, an emotional, draining, homecoming loss. I, I mean, even, even, the, even if you win coaching, then you go into an off week after a big homecoming, there's still a lull. Uh, but you having to uh, to really find the intensity, how difficult was it? Well, was it that your ball club was hungry to get back to work, or did you have to really work to get it there? No, uh, we, we didn't have to do a whole lot to, to get them back. We went out to uh, practice on Sunday, and the guys came out, and we, we addressed Every we just this game just like we do every game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we ran for our penalties. We, we made our corrections. We did everything business as usual, and they were ready to get back to work because they knew that we couldn't allow that game to continue to, to lull over us and, and end up costing us down the road. A lot of big plays that happened at homecoming 2019. Uh, just to bring you back to speed, let's take a look now at some of those exciting plays from two weeks ago, and then we'll come back in just a few moments. Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. The tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University. It's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. 
Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory? Or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. This December 21st, the best in HBCU football will collide in Atlanta at the Celebration Bowl. MEAC versus SWAC. Champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this December. For more information, visit thecelebrationbowl.com. Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson, sitting here as Terry Sims, our head football coach. And after a week's rest, now the Cats prepare to get back in action on the road at Dover, Delaware, against the Delaware State Hornets. Uh, coach, uh, we're tied one, four and one uh, with North Carolina A&T with three games left uh, in our journey to the Celebration Bowl. Uh, you had a week off. You talked about that uh, in the opening segment. And now, uh, offensively, Coach, Let's let's talk now for the next uh, five minutes or so about how we've looked throughout the season. We start the year off against Jackson State in Atlanta and and score va basically no points in the first half uh, with Akevius Williams coming out after a knee injury, his first action. Uh, we are virtually non-existent offensively the first half of that football game, and uh, you know we get a pick six. And uh, that really takes charge. We light the fires, and uh, and then that's what happens. Tell us about it. Well, you know, we, we we had I think a lot of guys in that Jackson State game. It was game one, coming out pressing, mm -hmm. excited to play another team. Everybody wanting to make plays, and I think we were pressing just a little bit too hard, and it caused a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. It caused for us to make a lot of mistakes. A lot of MAs uh, in the first half. We just had to take them in the locker room and settle them down and, and get them to understand that we had to trust the schemes in all three phases in order to, to get what we want to be in that football game. We end up winning that 36-15, Coach. A lot of weapons everybody saw, obviously, on the field. We just had to figure out who to get the ball when and in what situations. And uh, we go down to Miami the very next week to play the Hurricanes, who would dropped two very close last minute football games. They were licking their wounds and they were waiting on us. And coach, they blitzed Archivius on second and third downs and obvious passing situations. And they handed it to us and got to the point where uh, we just had to fold the tents on that game. Well, it, it was a game where uh, I think we allowed our, our some of our guys, our nerves to get to us. Uh, mm -hmm. We played well, I thought, defensively the first, you know, couple of quarters of that game. We, we hung in there with them, uh, but we just did not show up in, in the other phases of the, of the football game, and that hurts you when, when that happens. Yeah. You know, you leave your defense on the field too long, and um, you can't do that against a program like that. We then the next week we go to Mississippi Valley at the being a Mississippi coach to play our, our third consecutive non-conference opponent. And uh, we begin to find some footing, Coach. Uh, we win that one 22-6 on the road against a, a much improved Mississippi Valley State football team. Uh, we get a safety to get us rolling, but then Archivius finds his niche after coming to you and the team and saying, I've been playing a little bit too tentatively. Mm -hmm. he, he did. He came in and in a team meeting, he said, uh, Coach, I, can I address the team? And I said, sure. And he said, you know, guys, I just want to let you guys know it's been me. I, I've been way too cautious. I've been, you know, playing the game, scared, 
if you may use that word, he, he was just trying not to make mistakes, and that was not allowing him to be the player that, that he really is. Once he, he, he took those blinders off and he allowed himself to trust the scheme and play his game, he, he's been the guy that we knew he could be all along. He was not throwing the ball effectively that night, but the very next weekend, Coach, uh, against Howard University, we explode offensively. Uh, Jimmy Robinson uh, becomes the force on special teams, and Archivius runs the ball, throws the ball, and we put up a ton of points and a big win on the road against Howard University. Right, and you know him going out, not being afraid, not being you know scared to make mistakes, and just uh, trusting what we do and trusting himself. It, it allowed our whole offense to to take flight and and be the Wildcat offense that we knew we could be. The fire continues against Morgan State University, Coach. Uh, we put up a ton of points. Akevia's running the football. Uh, Jimmy Robinson, three touchdowns. The offensive line comes through big time, and we just continue to be this juggernaut offensively. Yeah, and you know, you have as many weapons as we have. You know, you, you, you got to get the ball uh, or figure out a way to get the ball to all these guys. And the one thing we have is, is a group of guys that are not selfish. They, they all want each other to do well. And, you know, Akivis just has a hard job spreading the ball around. And Coach Subra has a hard job of trying to get all of these guys to football at some point in time in the game. The emergence of uh, a big tight end in the scene, in the, in the series, uh, series after series, you get you know, throw that ball to Mallard, Coach, in the next three games, and that, that comes out big for you against North Carolina Central, Norfolk State, and even South Carolina State. It did. And, you know, Mallard's a weapon that we have to continue to use. You know, he's a guy that creates automatic mismatch matches on whoever he's lined up against uh, and, and he, he runs well he catches the ball very well and he gets open so we have things that that we have in, in plan right now in place for these next few games to really get the football to him and, and, and allow him to to show his skills a little bit more to the Wildcat fans so for the next three ball games coach uh, beginning this Saturday at Dover uh, offensively we've just got to be able to spread the ball around take what the offense defense gives us but what about us dictating terms how do you plan on doing that well I mean you know any defense that's worth, worth their salt they're going to tell you you got to stop the run first and that's what Delaware State wants to do their, their head coach is a former offensive lineman he, he, he you know he wants to run the football and we have to make sure that we're in place and our guys are in their gaps and we stop the run first make them one dimensional and then allow our outside backers and defensive ends to go do what they do Okay, we'll come back in just a few moments. We're going to flip the size of the ball. We're going to come back and talk about the Wildcat defense, their output, their performance, uh, the first eight games of the year. Back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Brent Crite. What will we do to move the university toward greatness? To truly succeed, it takes sharp, and up-to-the-minute skills, intercultural know-how, and leadership. As Mary McLeod Bethune knew, such ambitions will require a commitment that must be continuous. We will make the student experience the North Star for all our decision-making. The new generation of BC begins with you. It's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. This December 21st, the best in HBCU football will collide in Atlanta at the Celebration Bowl. MEAC versus SWAC, champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this December. For more information, visit thecelebrationbowl.com. It's a new day of Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. 
the tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune Cookman University. BC Wildcat football has been certainly exciting this 2019 campaign, and we find ourselves right now tied at the top of the heap. Three games left in the season. And Coach Terry Sims, you know, uh, with three games left to go, you've got a Wildcat defensive unit that's 18 sacks on the year, uh, plus seven in the takeaways. Uh, but, but that's gotten you where you are so far, but that's not enough, is it? It's not, and you know we wish we had given a little bit better defensive effort uh, a couple weeks ago uh, and and won that game, but we didn't. And, and our defense has uh, been bending a little bit, but not breaking. Uh, we just have to shore up some things, and I think we did that this week with the the increased individual drills and and like I said, the scrimmages that we had during the week, uh, just to keep our guys in in focus, keep them in form. And I, I, don't, I think the only way you get better at playing football is playing. <laughs> okay. So we played football a lot last week, and I, I think our guys, they, they got the message, they understand what's going on, and, and hopefully this defensive unit can come back strong and, and stand up and be the unit that we know they can be. Well, let's take a look at the eight games. Coach, we start the season off in Atlanta against Jackson State. Uh, Jackson State moves the ball extremely well on us. Uh, they score some points. Uh, they won the stat game, but they didn't win the scoreboard game, did they? No, they didn't. And, you know, I'm I'm a little bit different than a lot of coaches. I'm not really going to go into the win or loss. I'm not going into the stats and say we won time of possession. We won this, we won that. I only care about the end result. They I care about the score. They didn't take away either. No, they didn't. They didn't win it. Okay. And, and, you know, usually that's a stat that will tell you if you won or lost a game. If you, you had a lot of turnovers on your side, you probably didn't win. If you created a lot of turnovers, you probably had a great opportunity to win the football game. That's what happened for us game one. Game two, Coach, defensively, we played a tremendous football game uh, up until two minutes to go in the first half. Uh, where it was 14 nothing Miami, and uh, we give up the, we have a turnover at midfield, and uh, Miami then converts, uh, coach, and then they stop us a couple of times and force uh, field position battles and and uh, have some great individual plays on their part, and uh, and the, the result was a loss, a big loss on the road. Then coach, we go to Mississippi Valley and the Wildcat defense against a very mobile quarterback shows up uh, in a 22-6 win. Yep, and that's the defense that, that we were looking for. Yeah. Those guys to come up and that the quarterback at Mississippi Valley is an exceptional athlete, uh, does a lot of great things with the football, can throw the ball also, and I think we did a great job of containing him that night. The next weekend we go to Howard University expecting to see Kalen Newton. We run into another guy, and this guy was phenomenal, a uh, freshman quarterback. Quentin Williams, and uh, this guy reminds us of a bigger version of our legendary Quentin Williams, and uh, he continued to throw the football. He ran the ball extremely well. We get out of there with a big win, but they racked up some yardage, and it was a, I, I guess it was a guy that you never saw on tape. You had no tape on him. Oh, and, you know, you, you saw him a little bit here and there in places, but he, Quentin is going to be uh, a force in this in this league for for years to come. Great quarterback, uh, fearless quarterback, great arm, and he can run the football. So lo looking for a lot of big, big things out of him. Next week, Morgan State comes to town. They try to ball control us, do a good job of that, Coach. Uh, keeping our offense off the field, but Jimmy Robinson, Archivius Williams take over the football game. And defensively, we really put it to them. They score on the special teams blunder that we had. Uh, but the, 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 there was no doubt in the outcome of the football game. Defensively, we come up with six sacks on the day. And, you know, that's a, a tribute to our defensive coaches and our guys that are playing on defense. Mm -hmm. They did a great job of preparing for Morgan State, knowing what they were going to do, and, and countering every move that they make. We go on the road Thursday night to Central. Another great defensive performance, Coach. We force a couple of field goals. Jimmy Robinson does his thing. Uh, we just play extremely well, making them uh, stop them on fourth down several times, making them one-dimensional. And anytime you can make a team one-dimensional, you have a great opportunity to win the football game because then your, your defensive coordinator, your defensive staff can focus on one thing and one thing only and stopping, whether it be the run or the pass, focus on stopping that. 
Norfolk State comes to town with probably the best offense, one of the two best offensive units we've seen in a long time, and it boils down to a takeaway uh, late in the football game and three sacks on a game-winning drive that they thought they were going to get. We win it because of defense in the end. And again, our defense showed up, and they, they, they allowed uh, our football team to enjoy another win. Uh, they came up with, like you said, the three sacks. We came up with, with the takeaway, and that was a drive that Norfolk was going in to score. Uh, they turn the ball over, and we give the ball back to our offense, and they go down and make good things happen. South Carolina State game, Coach, we still played championship. It was a championship caliber football game. Uh, the defensive unit, you say you were disappointed in the performance overall. We could have done far more things, but nonetheless, Coach, we've still got a defensive unit that's ranked high in the MEAC. Uh, that's the team we're going to stick with, and that's the team that's going to take us to victory this Saturday in Dover, Delaware? No question. We're, we're, I'm, I'm always betting on my guys. Uh, we'll, we'll be just fine. I think, you know, a couple of weeks ago, if if the ball could bounce anyone's way any better, I mean, you have a fumble in the end zone, uh, they take it for 30 yards, you, you have a fumble kickoff, a fumble punt. There are a lot of things that happened in that football game, and it just didn't bounce our way that day. But, uh, you know, we, we've forgotten that game. It's behind us. We're focused on Dell State and, and looking forward to uh, this week in Dover. We'll come back in just a few moments. We'll talk a little bit about special teams, and then we'll look around the league before we wrap things up. Welcome back to the fourth quarter of the Wildcat Football Insider. Uh, this week we are just uh, ready to go back to work after a week off. The Cats enjoyed uh, this week and now we are going to Dover, Delaware uh, to play the Delaware State Hornets in a big football game. The Cats find themselves 4-1 and one, tied on top of the league standings with North Carolina a and Terry Sims, uh, let's talk about special teams for a moment. Uh, so far, so good. We had, uh, we got fooled in a fake punt against South Carolina State, but uh, nonetheless, so over, all of, you know, overall, we've had a couple of block kicks here that we gave up, but uh, that's something that we've been doing to people most of the year. We have, and, and that's something that we had to work on hard this week on getting fixed because we are the team that, that blocks kicks. We don't get kicks blocked. And we've had way too many blocked this year. Uh, and it's just personnel things that, that we had to move some guys around and shore some places up. Uh, and, and I think now we have it fixed. We have guys that, that, are, that we need to have in there. And hopefully we don't have that happen anymore this season. Two great kickers, uh, you know. Uh, Javier McDaniel and uh, you know you've got him doing extremely well now and let's talk about your punter. Well when, when, when you talk about Bryce you know Bryce is an older guy Bryce is a, a free spirit 
and, and he keeps our team grounded, I think. You know, when you, you're talking about a young man from Australia who, who's had it, you know, pretty rough coming up, but you, you couldn't tell it. And when he takes the field, he takes the field with the, with the plan and with the mindset that, that you love to see football players take it. And I think, you know, having Javier with him, Javier is growing up fast, and I think, you know, he'll be someone uh, in, in the near future that a lot of the Wildcat fans will be proud of. Absolutely. And we had a, another young man that everybody was kind of up in the air about a few years back. Uh, named Uriel Hernandez. And Uriel was the same way when he first got in. And, and uh, I think the difference now, Uriel had to come in with Giovanni, and they were both freshmen uh, trying to lead each other. Uh, Bryce is great for Javier right now, and, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, they have each other okay. to, to bounce things off of. So our kicking unit, I think, will be good for the next couple of years. And that's great to hear, Coach, because we're going to need them down the stretch run. And down the stretch run is going to be very interesting in the conference. Uh, this past weekend, Coach, a lot of great things happened in league play. FAMU continues to roll 52-30 to 30 over Delaware State, and we visit the Hornets this weekend. Norfolk State finally gets it unleashed. 48-0 over Morgan State at their homecoming. North Carolina Central wins in Washington, D.C., 28-6 over Howard. And the big one in Orangeburg, South Carolina. A&T ekes one out, 22-20 over the Bulldogs. Coach, interesting stuff. And uh, this thing is playing out. Uh, nobody knows who's going to be in the Celebration Bowl. And that's the MEAC. The last couple years, there's so much parity in the league, and I love it. I love it having competitive teams in this league. You can't go into one game saying, we know we're going to win this game. You know, we leave that up to the fans, but each coach in this league understands you're going to have to come to play and have your team prepared to play week in and week out in this league. Well, the big question is, will the Cats be prepared this weekend in Dover? No question. We will be prepared. Well, you heard here from Coach Terry Sims. For those of you who are not going to be able to join the Wildcats this coming Saturday in Dover, Delaware, uh, you can certainly catch us on any one of the digital platforms via the Cat Eye Network or the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. It'll be interesting to see how the Cats fare after a week off. It's the Hornets and the Cats as the Cats resume their journey to the Celebration Bowl. For Terry Sims and the Wildcats, I'm Lynn Thompson. We'll see you in Dover.